building the bongo cajon, we're on steps five and six. That's all that we have left. So step five is to um, sand, a bunch of sanding. So we've just glued this top on. And what we want to do now is make this uh, pleasant to hold. So there's some overhang, as we talked about on the top. And you might have, uh, you know, these might be overhanging a little bit. They might not be flush. So you just want to go ahead and, and basically sand everything flush. Now, there's a variety of different ways to do this. If you have access to a router with a flush trim bit, that's a great way to take care of the top. Um, using a hand, an electric hand sander like this, uh, is probably the fastest and easiest way to take care of this. You can really go at this nicely, quickly. If you don't have access to any of that, as I've mentioned a couple times before, see if you can borrow some tools from some neighbors or friends. Uh, it's a great way to get this project done and get to know some folks. If you don't have access to any of that, you can use things like a sanding block. So there's, you know, a, you can just make your own. Again, just glue some 100 grit paper or use some double stick carpet tape and put some 100 grit paper on a flat block and, and that'll help you, you know, shape things, especially that you can shape corners um, with something like this. Another nice thing to do is, here's one we've made here. It's a block of wood with some leather and you can take then some 100 grit paper and just uh, wrap it around like this. And this is, um, take you a little little doing here, but it'll, it'll get the job done. You can go over these corners and round those off. And, you know, you really want to round over these corners because this is where you're playing. So I'm gonna switch over to one here that we've already mainly rounded over. Now, we like to use a router to round things over here at the shop, so this is probably a quarter inch round over a bit. We've gone over uh, all the edges you can see here. And, uh, and so what we would do at now after we've got these all rounded over is hand sand them to smooth it out. The other thing I'd point out in this stage is that, um, you know, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but these side pieces, they're solid wood, and depending on the humidity, they might have, um, you know, bowed a little bit, and consequently, you might not have a real tight seam along here. And that's okay. That's not a problem if you have some gaps. You can even leave them there and just go ahead and, and finish it. If you want to make it look a little nicer, you can go to the hardware store and, and get some wood filler. It's pretty easy to find. Um, get a, uh, you know, a kind that's a similar color as this mahogany, like a brown. Might, maybe a walnut would work well. And you could just put some wood filler in, in any gaps you see. Um, you might check along the top where the, the top piece is glued to the frame and see if there's any gaps there. You could also fill that with some wood filler. Um, so once you have rounded over all your corners and you've got the wood filler in and everything looks good, you're gonna do your final sanding and I'd recommend that you use some uh, 180 grit paper or higher, you know, 180 is fine. And you wanna go ahead and sand and, and do your best to sand off any machining marks. If you've used a router like we have here, there's you'll see there's a little bit of burning there. So you'd wanna, we'd wanna sand that off. Um, and then you can work your way up to some finer grits if you want, but not necessary. 180 pretty much will do the trick for you. So when you're happy uh, with the way everything's looking, it's time to put your finish on. And I think in the directions uh, I talk about using a, a polyurethane finish, a wipe-on polyurethane. You know, you can use an oil finish or a shellac or lacquer or, or anything. You know, and we find generally that um, the more thin coats you can put on, the better. You know, real thin coats and a lot of them and a little bit of light sanding in between really makes for a nice finish. Uh, now this one here has just been a clear finish on it. W you know, you can you have the option to stain this or do some other kind of decoration. Um, and, and that's it. Once you've got your finish on, let it dry and have at it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed making this project and, uh, and also hope you enjoy playing on your bongo cajon.